Are we live? I'm not... One sec. YouTube says I'm getting an error. I have no idea if I'm live yet. Alright, I'm live. Okay, sounds good. If it's, um, if it's too loud, I got both my windows open uh, and it's pouring. It's like a thunderstorm outside. Let me know um, and I'll close them. Right now it feels nice though. Alright, let's get started because WIMI got me all sorts of feeling weird. Um, oh my god, I traded this like an animal this morning. Um, some were good trades, a lot of scratches. I'm already at 10 trades, which is almost more than I trade on any given day. So absolutely kind of wild um, little adventure here. I was trading them pretty early because we've been having some huge runs pre-market lately. Um, first of all, it's a little bit of house, housekeeping here. Morning, everyone. Welcome back to the live stream. We first review the watch list, then we trade the market open every day. Hope everyone is ready to go. I got my lemonade over there feeling fresh. Today is Friday, the last trading day of the week. It's July 10th, and it's 9.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we've got another 13 minutes before the market opens at 9.30, and then we'll wrap up trading around 11. Little quick reminder, guys, for everyone that's new, this is for education, entertainment purposes only. Uh, my trades are quick, and really, I are not really meant to be followed. Um, you always want to be asking yourself, you know, why am I trading this? What's my thesis? Always know what your targets are. This community is a place to help each other. Um, please do not spam or you will be silenced in terms of timeout or being kicked. Uh, check out the video description below for some FAQs and let's get to it. Starting off with WIMI because this one could still be a pre-market trade at some point. Right now we're definitely on the backside, I think, because this pullback is a bit bigger now. We're clearly under the nine minute EMA um, at 11% pullback from the pre-market highs. Honestly, WIMI is just flying. Um, I gave it a rating of an eight this morning, 80% uh, gapping at first, and now it's at 114%. Chinese advertising company with doing its own 5G chip uh, design. So kind of interesting uh, catalyst for sure. Huge, fast rate of change uh, in the price target that we want. Uh, on the daily, it's also kind of interesting we go back here, uh, da, da, da. let me go to daily. Um, so we can't go back any further than this. I think they might've IPO'd in this area, or at least they did some sort of merger. Either way, this is as far back as the chart goes. We had a low of 0.32. We broke through all these resistance zones and uh, now we're kind of in the high here. So, you know, how much further is WIMI gonna go? It's really, really hard to say because there is no resistance anymore that we can look at besides the high of 925. So I wouldn't be surprised if 925 was a zone that a lot of people were looking at. So we're gonna keep a close eye on that ourselves. Let's go here, kind of place the line there just to kind of keep track of it. Yeah, Wafu is flying as well. Man, a lot of interesting plays today. RETO looks like it might start doing a reversal, keeping a close eye on that. Praying to baby Jesus the internet doesn't die. Wafu is a Chinese education and training service company. We've sell a lot of those not too long ago. 1.2 million float guys on Wafu. Right now it's at around 70% gapping pre-market. Um, does it have a catalyst? I don't see a catalyst. Hold on. No cat. No cat that I find. Let me know if you guys see a catalyst for Wafu. I, I think it could just be a squeeze or a bit of a bounce here off this area. Be a little careful, not sure if that's gonna hold. Right now we're at eight. So we're already in this kind of resistance zone here at eight. 850 seems pretty important. 
So just keep an eye on for that. RETO is popping up again here. So with RETO, guys, let's go to this one. This one's gapping up around 100%, pulling up right now. It could be an interesting break if we move above VWAP. 13 million flow, Chinese building materials company with a catalyst of Beijing Winter Olympics 2020 that they are going to be working on Chinese, um, I think it's like an expressway or something like that. Let me go here. High visibility ex Chinese expressway. So they're a building company. Yeah, interesting. So we have some really good floats here. Uh, RETO with the highest float of 13 million. So Wafu and RETO are the most interesting. I'm not going to be looking at PSV unless I see a specific reason to like look at it again. The only reason I put it on my top stocks to trade is this morning is because um, is because there was nothing else gapping up around 7:30 when I was running the watch list uh, originally. Yeah, Joe, a market order is, I'm pretty sure, always okay. I, I would have to try that out. I, I, I couldn't really totally answer that. You could always try it out with one share and see what happens. Joe says the catalyst is China school closings. So, and then they're moving to online schools. G A X Y. I don't see a reason to trade this one. Maybe as a swing or something, but as a day trade, not really um, something that I would be looking at. Yeah, the rain is, it's pouring outside. So I can close the windows, guys. Just let me know. But for now, I'm going to leave them open if it's not too loud. Um, just, just let me know. I'm not, actually, I don't know. It's getting crazy. We got another seven minutes. I'll film this and I'll put it in the recap video so you guys can see how crazy it is. guys are <laughs> all right you guys will see that in the recap video today uh, we got another six minutes I don't really want to be trading right now because you know I know that the WIMI is a bit overextended RETO might be really the one to go for appreciate it Carmela I'm in Berlin right now. Yeah, Ian, I would review all the trades, but I mean, you guys pretty much get the gist. If you've been here for a little bit, you kind of understand my trading style. Um, a lot of these I sold too early because um, they were very weak breakouts. You could see all these breakouts were kind of, um, they didn't last very long. And then my last attempt was actually the one that was the breakout. So sometimes it happens. I was trading with about you know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollar position sizes. So the fact that we walked our way with eighty bucks, you know, like six percent on our average position size, that's okay. Like it's not the worst. It could have been much, much more, but I was kind of I don't know. You know, sometimes I would be trading the breakouts, then I would get faked out, it would pull back, I would be red, I would close my position, then it'll pop back up. I would get in for another breakout. It was again a fake out, and then a like in the end it kind of worked. 
a little bit, but you know, buying the pullbacks on WIMI would have been a little bit better. So David, uh, so different. I know David, it's crazy. I know, I know. It's uh, it's a little bit ruthless this morning. So we got another four minutes here. Make sure my volume's okay. So you guys hear everything that's going on. Whew. All right. So on the main chart, I got WIMI. I would like to see this one maybe break pre-market highs of 925. That's what I'm going to be watching. I got RETO on my second screen. Right now, it's still pulling back. Really want to see it start breaking higher. Um, decent support, probably about 1.5. So maybe it could be a red to green move. Okay, rain is chilling out a little bit here. I just got the shivers. I think it's the PP, P, um, PPS indicator. If you just go to studies, you can say add study, um, all studies, and then it's under P. And then you can see it right here. Gary. What I think about BNTX, I'm I'm not sure. I'm trying to get myself in position here for the lead gappers. Let's go quickly to WAFU, see what it's doing. Kind of reminds me a little bit of AIHS when it had that quick pop to the upside. I don't really think I'm gonna be trading WAFU. Who knows, maybe I'm gonna be missing a big one. I'll keep an eye out, see what the lead gappers are for now. WIMI is really the, the closest one I want to be focused on. Definitely a big resistance, about 8.7. I'm making a little ski slope pattern right here. Keep an eye on 7.5. I always like to move my um, time in force to day right before the market opens because if you use good um, till cancel and extended hours, sometimes it gives you issues if you put stops in and then you start tripping over yourself. So I don't really want to do that. We can re review more tickers um, after the market opens like, a little bit like 10 or, you know, around 10 o'clock or so. Just remind me, Eddie. I'll be happy to look at it. All right, guys. 30 more seconds. Good luck, everyone. WIMI pulling back. I won't be surprised if this one has a hard dip, guys. Remember, it's already up quite a bit. Here we go. Pulling back. Watching VWAP bounce here. Breaking, possible the EMA. This was about a four or 5% pullback. 
I'm not really convinced yet. I'm gonna give this one a little bit longer. Ambulances are on standby. Pull back again. Seventy-five. Reto breaking higher could break VWAP. WIMI trying for red to green. Looks like VWAP's gonna break here. Pull back to 62. Six red five minute candles in a row. RETO might break. VWAP. Markets are green. Slightly. EMA could be breaking here. RETO breaking VWAP. Gonna look for an entry here, see if we can break higher. Looking for that break in the EMEA. Ah, just stumbled over myself there. Taking a loss here. 13, yeah, gave back all my pre-market profits. You know what? I had a feeling that was a bad idea and I still did it. I was like, this is not, this. we tried like three times here. I was also saying pre-market, I should not be tra trading breakouts because those were all my losses pre-market. Oh well, you know, sometimes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose that one. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Let's keep watching WIMI. So unfortunately, we gave back some of our profits on this one. Let's see how this one goes. Still selling off here. Yeah, I should have known better on that one. So that was a pretty serious loss, probably like 5% or so. Could be the break here at 50. Buyers coming in a little bit. Looking for a bounce back higher here. Looking for a break back above VWAP. Cutting this one, small profits, does basically a scratch. I was looking for a bigger bounce, wasn't getting that bounce quickly. So sold this position, small profit, nothing, nothing crazy. Maybe we'll get a bounce here. I don't know. That's a little bit unfortunate. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you just get snuck. I can't believe I got snuck that bad. Um, yeah, buying, buying breakouts, guys, is just 
it's my it's never been my go-to. Um, I bought the breakout. I think I was too eager. I jumped the gun, gave back my profits pre-market. Happens, so that's just how it is. Let's wait for a cleaner setup here. Maybe a five minute setup of some sort. The bounce was the right idea. So that was good. Let's give it a little time. W I M I, I think is our leak gapper. My scanner is still yet to update. Yeah, Corey, really good point with that. We're just not getting fall through on the breakouts. It's been a little bit uh, disappointing. And I'm kind of kicking myself because I knew that. I knew that. So like pre-market, I was like, trading breakouts is not working for me. Yesterday, breakouts didn't work. Um, so it's a little bit annoying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red candles in a row here, are five minute red candles. I don't know why my scanner is not updating. It's a little bit annoying. Wow, so far after like, what, 11 trades now, we're at break even. Basically just gave back all my profits on that one trade. Ah, it's always annoying when that happens. But let's just, you know, keep an open mind here, see what happens. Honestly, I'm not looking at OXY or OGEN. I would, but for some reason, I'm not really. S S not, the scanners are not working. I'm not sure about WKHS. I think it's a bit overextended. <clears throat> we talked about that, I think, uh, pretty recently in one of the recap videos. All right, here we go. Scanners finally loading. WIMI might have a little setup here. I can't believe I bought that uh, that possible breakout. Here we go. Could be back above VWAP. RETO is still selling off. This is a big sell off with RETO. Here we go. I think this breakout actually might suffice as it's building up volume. I don't think I can get myself to buy another breakout. Yeah, there we go. There was the, f the drop. I'm wondering, is WIMI going to be another sell-off story that just sells off all day? I really was hoping we would get some sort of reversal. Markets are still green except NASDAQ pulling back. Let's see, WIMI lead gapper on the day by far.
Possible dip trade on RETO. Got an entry with only 50 shares at 147, so not sure if it's even worth showing you guys. I'll pull it up here for a second. Yeah, missed that entry, so I'll probably just close this one. Wafu breaking higher, looking good. I'm closing my Wafu position, I mean my RETO position. Basically a partial entry fumble. OGEN popping up nicely here. 18% move so far, looking really good. Starts to hamster cells, coronavirus, positive news, oral development program. Quick pullback here in OGEN. I like WAFU more, it has a little bit more volume. Wow, what a huge sell off on WIMI. Nine forty three. Still pulling back. Yeah, nice work, Mike. Wafu well, trying to break out here. That was a lot of selling volume it had, though. 944. Our ETO might break 1.4, kind of 6, this big support zone. Possible move here on WIMI. Can we see a move back above the EMA?
quick entry here at 47 looking for a little bit of fall through big sellers back on this one have a very tight stop looks like could see a bit of a breakout close this one back on the green with WIMI took a very tight trade on this one only about 20 less than 20 cents ish Woohoo! i was so nervous that that would happen and it happened so far just bad luck on this one for me so i well, actually i'll say good luck because i got out on that time big sellers guys at seven Th huge sellers at seven watch out that was a big dip guys Dips like that don't come for no reason. That would have put me pretty deep in the hole. This was also one of my bigger position sizes, one of my first bigger position sizes. Bigger support here. That was sketchy. That was a straight stiffler move. Oh my lord. I don't even know if I want to keep trading WIMI. But this is actually where I've been wanting it the whole time. Could see a big bounce in this zone. That was a serious flush. PSV on the move. Yeah, 109%. Here we go, WIMI pulling off again. I felt the flood coming too. You could just tell in the order book, it was like not having it. It was aggressive entry as well. Again, I bought the breakout. I don't know why I'm buying the breakout on WIMI. I keep saying don't buy the breakout and then I buy the breakout. Huge support in this zone. Whatever happened to Wafu? Yeah, pulled back. I was kind of expecting a move like that. Was that a halted? Was Wafu halted? Time to relax, Alex. Shrikant, you're absolutely right. Honestly, that's a really good idea. I like where the price is though right now. Just watching it closely. Man, guys, it's been all about pre-market trading recently. Wow, this could be another dip here. I think people got so nervous. Yeah, David, you're probably right. RETO could be an interesting spot to break out right here at 46. A 
Wow, look at that pullback. Just so aggressive, this stock. Trying to keep my mind, my mind open. Maybe we could see a very obvious setup. Maybe I'm missing something here. Markets are okay, kind of stable. NASDAQ selling off a bit harder. WIMI, just huge sell volume at the open. Price is kind of stabilizing in this area. Possible move about the nine minute. Could be another flush. 780. Let's see if we can get a move higher here. Nope, just joined into a flush. All right, gave back my profits again. Wow, I don't know, is, is this a indicator that um, I should just not be trading today. This is a huge sell-off. Let's just keep watching this one more time. I've been red, green, red, green on WIMI all day. Actually, pre-market, I was green, 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 green. Market opened, red, back to green, back to red. Sloppy trading on my end, just not getting the resolutions. I'm trying to buy the reversals, not happening. Take a walk, man. Yeah, I think um, I should have done that last time. Let me take a big swig. What would have been really nice is if I probably waited like five more seconds and then I just bought the dip down here, took my 3% and walked away. It's kind of more or less what I wanted. We broke that with not that big a volume. Unfortunately, I had to cut my losses, so I was instantly in the red. Yeah, I mean, most of these catalyst guys are all planned dumps. I mean, that's just, that's a fact. That's why these stocks gap up one day and then they disappear the next day. But oftentimes you get, you know, multi-day runners. Um, that's not really what I'm looking for, but I am looking for these things to sometimes, you know, break new highs, uh, close at a high, things like that. Keep breaking out to new highs. And that's what we do. Um, that's what I was doing pre-market and pre-market, you know, it was working very, very well. I didn't transition quick enough um, to the fact that we are on the backside of the move. That was my mistake. But we were still above VWAP. We were still trending above WeWAP, and um, there was some potential there. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Looks like Vladimir is in the group. <laughs> I hold some Neo, so I guess you could say there's a little bit of staking. Uh, sell momentum's light. I mean, WIMI could have a reversal. Mm, yeah. That's a 
really unfortunate. This is kind of the move I wanted right here. The flushes on WIMI have just been so wicked. Light volume on this pullback so far. See if we can get an entry here on this breakout. Breaking the EMA. That was really unfortunate. I I joined the ask um, and I did not get my my fill, but we're back in the green. Oh my god, this is probably some of my worst trading. This might even be worse trading than Monday. Uh, oh well, Tuesday Tuesday Wednesday was pretty pretty good stuff. Uh, today I'm a bit all over the place. All right, guys, now I will I will take my walk. I'll be back. Give me like give me like two minutes. There she blows. Nice. Ross is a savage. Awesome stuff. We'll get there at one point. That's... We'll be there. That's true, Kirill. He takes, I think, he takes like on average 50,000 sizes, um, um, dollar size. And then last time I was watching one of his recap videos, he was like in at $150,000 on one of his trades. I'm like, what? Uh, so for him to have a 6K day, you know, or like a 20,000 day or something, you know, 
you got to put it all in perspective here. So for the fact that on, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, I was, or Tuesday and Wednesday, I was trading, you know, with $1,500 position sizes and I had a, um, you know, $230 day. That's pretty good. Percentage wise, that's really, really nice. So we're doing everything right. We just need to um, probably improve our accuracy a little bit and, um, and then just kind of keep growing our position size. And I think within a year or so, you know, we can be at ten, twenty thousand dollar position sizes, feeling very comfortable. I mean, I could obviously do ten thousand dollar position size right now, um, and I'm going to be working my way up to five thousand. But it's all about kind of feeling comfortable. So we just did, you know, this last trade. This was we closed at seven dollars. So that was that was a twenty one hundred dollar position size. So we're definitely getting there. Still hurt for the elusive five-figure day. Any other time, this setup here on WIMI would be a huge breakouts um, indicator. And we're making a nice um, flag setup right here. I mean, this could break out any other day above VWAP. I would probably be trading this one. Man, it's so tempting. I can't believe I did. I'm at 16 trades today, 14 of which. Um, are re like full position size trades on WIMI. That might be the most back and forth I've ever done on this channel. Hey, fun for toys. That's pretty cool, man. You're definitely getting there. Here we go, WMI. Is this the breakout we were all waiting for? I mean, based on everything we're seeing here, it should be low volume, decreasing sell volume, trending above the nine minute EMA. This could be it. I want this breakout. But I feel like there's some dark forces in action here on WIMI that just is better if I don't trade it. Well, there was actually, okay, so it did do the breakout. So yeah, we would have been right. Ah, it is what it is. PSV percentage wise is looking pretty hot, but I gotta say, um, it doesn't have a lot of volume, which makes me a little bit nervous here. PSV had an 8 million float, which makes its spikeability really huge. It had a forbearance agreement on a $130 million loan. Um, if you guys don't know what a forbearance agreement is, it's basically, quote unquote, you get extra time. It's like if you are about to default or you have a loan payment you can't make and you get forbearance, it's like, okay, well, we'll let you make that payment. Um, we'll give you some extra time. WIMI, guys, breaking above VWAP. <laughs> David, it's what all the US is. Wow! Ah! No, WIMI had the huge breakout. Oh, the one we've been waiting for this whole time. And I'm just over here. Ah, oh. ah, oh. that's so painful. 15%. I think it's halted. Here we go. WIMI is halted. I'm crying right now. Thirty percent didn't pay July mortgage. Wow, that is huge. Man, I'm so kicking myself about this. Somehow, somehow I didn't get it today.
Yeah, David, it's a, it's, it's a good point. And I think, I think it's a very slippery slope to go down because accumulating debt, unless you're drastically making some life changes, is very hard to pay on one chunk sum. I hope some of you guys joined the WIMI breakout and are in this hold. I know for me, I'm not, and I'm absolutely kicking myself. This is the one I wanted. We are officially, this was a red to green move. We're green back on the day on the one candle chart. Ah. Nice cloud, you traded the bull flag. Yeah, man, I wanted the bull flag so bad, but I got skunked like four times in a row and I was losing my appetite a little bit. And then of course, right when you stop trading it, it's the one that breaks out. Just always the case, I guess. That was such a wicked sell off. This whole dip from the pre-market high was about 30%. Not like the worst, but just right out there on the limit. Hey, I go. Yeah, Kirill, I kind of feel the same way. It's it's going to be one of those situations where I think we look back in two years and you're going to be like, man, it was so obvious that we were in a bubble or something like that. That's my, that's how I feel. I've been saying that since like 2015, so I could be totally wrong, um, but I don't know. Um, we had a big break of momentum and we kind of had a bottom bounce, V-shaped bottom bounce. And oftentimes that's a, that's a big sign that there's a crack at least with day trading. So I don't know. I don't, I don't see, I don't see it continuing too much longer. All right. So we're going to be opening up here in about a minute, minute and 10 seconds. This is going to be one heck of a open for sure. Thirty more seconds here, guys. Good luck, everyone. Instantly just keeps piling higher. Wow, what a wicked move. Possible drop here. Seven point nine.
72. Was thinking about buying this dip. Didn't do it. Move my limit order. Again, try to buy the dip. Didn't get the one I wanted. Remove my limit order. Watching it closely. Just got an entry here, looking for this continuation. Closed for a small loss. A little bit unfortunate. Again, looking for continuation. Ah, man, I am just, I am just all over the place with this ticker. Uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Gave back back my profit is on this one. Yeah, it is what it is. Let's see, just watching the five minute charts here. This would be, in theory, a great entry. Been really nervous about the flushes on WIMI. That's why I keep closing my position so quickly. Looking again here for a reversal. Not too much selling volume on this one. That's a good sign. Let's see if we can do a little crack higher here. Looking for one last possible move to the upside. Oh, didn't get that. Not sure where my sell order even is. Trying to get out of this one. Taking a big loss on it. Yeah, I'm going to have to walk away. Broke my max stop for the day. Down $117. That wraps up my trading for today. I am not allowed to go past $100. Sometimes it happens on one trade, obviously, especially with bigger position size. Try to buy the dip several times. Yeah, so we started off with $80 in the positive, ended with 117 in the negative with WIMI. I just, I stumbled over myself. It was sloppy trading for me this end. I was, I was trading breakouts uh, on WIMI when I said we're not seeing it. So clearly, very clearly, emotional trading on my end. So... I should have known better. I definitely, definitely should have known better. Um, looks like I even sold at the low as well. Ah, ah, it's so painful. Whatever. That's just how it is sometimes. We had a good week. Overall this week we have, we grew our account very nicely. I couldn't be any more happy. Um, this was actually our first red day this week. I think, unless Monday, what was Monday? I forgot, Monday was either like a $5 red day or $10 red day or like a 20 or so dollar green day. It was equally as shaky. Um, but, you know, we had we had some really good days this week. So yeah, a bit unfortunate, we lost $117 today, but it is what it is. 
So that throws in the towel for me. I made $1.50 on RETO. I made, I lost 117 on WIMI. And overall, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm a little bit upset because we started off so good and then I didn't make the mental switch. Even this last trade, you know, we could have been up 20, 30 bucks. Uh, Nah, I don't know. I'll have to think about it, but I think I already know what I did wrong. I was just, I think I was doing a little bit of emotional trading. Srikant, Alex Timoney trades for you today. You are absolutely right. 100% right. Today was the most trades I've done. Um, most of which were pre-market. I did 18 trades today. Just ridiculous. Wow. Documenting these trades is going to take some time. So, mm. was on the easy short list. Interesting. Don't forget to smash the like button, guys, if you enjoy the content. I'll be around here a little bit longer. Um, we still got you know plenty of time in the day. But um, for me to kind of wrap up trading, it would be best if I leave this screen um, or else I might do something silly. That was quite the roller coaster today. I probably should have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I was buying breakouts on WIMI. That part is kind of ridiculous. Um, that cost me basically all of my profits uh, pre-market. That was the big, that was a big issue. I built a really nice cushion pre-market and I gave it all back in one trade. Uh, yeah, that's, that's always annoying. I took two big losses today. That doesn't happen all the time. And they were like, in hindsight, looking at it, it feels so obvious. I mean, in hindsight, everything's 2020, right? But, uh, yeah, I tripped over myself a lot. FOMO hits hard today. Yeah, it does. It definitely did. did. Dominion? What do you mean, Eddie? One AP Pro gave back all week's profit on this week. Oh, man, dude, on, on today. Yeah, that's... I was so nervous I would do something silly like that. Um, you know what? What's a little bit ridiculous is the fact that I took some of my biggest position size on a ticker that I was doing poor on. That's also a big sign that maybe maybe I wasn't thinking straight to begin with. I don't know. I felt pretty I felt pretty good about WIMI though. Like I was I was getting it getting it okay pre-market. Oh, I just had a whole lemon. Oh, my Lord. Wow, check out these filled orders. This is just insane.
No, I didn't trade PSV. Um, it would have been a good one. I, I like the, the breakouts it was doing. There were very clean breakouts. There weren't a lot. I think there was like two entries I would have done on PSV. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, I think I was probably revenge trading, huh, on WI Mime. I was trying to probably increase position size to make back my funds quicker. But at the same time, I've been trying to grow my position size to like 2,500. Um, and we felt, I felt like we had the volume to do it and everything was, you know, kind of all right. Um, and on a few of the trades, it worked out. But the big loser was the, finally the one that didn't work out. So it is what it is. Yeah, we lost 40 cents a share on that stock. That's my max stop on it. That's my max stop on a on a stock. Yeah, interesting. That's why I wrap up. You know, I hit I went below $100. I said, "You know what? That can't happen." Because what if we do another trade and I somehow happen to lose like 10% on it, right? Then I'm then all of a sudden I'm giving back like a week of profit a little bit. Then I'm getting in that territory. Um, not really a week of profit, but you know, like that's taking some steps back. So clearly I'm not doing it right today. So I'm not going to go pedal to the metal or wait, pedal to the metal, pedal to the metal. That's, that's all right. Pedal to the floor. Why does that sound so wrong? So I'm not going to go, you know, a hundred percent, uh, or keep going a hundred percent if I'm clearly going down the wrong path. Um, if we were up a hundred bucks right now and everything's, you know, working better and better, then I could keep increasing position size. I can get aggressive more and more aggressive, um, because clearly what I'm doing is working. Um, but you know, once you're down, you got to throw in the towel. Um, you got to have certain limits for yourself. And, uh, I hit my limit, unfortunately. Yeah, interesting point, Kumar. Yeah, the bottom of the cars used to be metal. <laughs> yeah, that's a valid point, Jared. I was just thinking to myself, like, where's the metal? Um, unless you had an old Eldorado where you got fuzzy carpet floor. Yeah, I like, Kirill, good point with the long positions. I actually, I like to have my long positions, my day trading, my dividend portfolio. That way, um, you know, you have a nice mix of um, revenue from your different uh, sources. Nice trade, King. sell drugs until you're the champ. I don't know about that. I wonder if WIMI is going to break higher again here. Yeah, nice little bottom bounce there. Congrats to anyone that got that bottom bounce. That was a heck of a trading session today.
S P A Q. I'd be a little bit more um, careful in the EV space. I think um, we're on the back side of this move, um, this macro setup here, potentially. A lot of these companies had a big run recently and they're all kind of losing momentum a little bit. I think after today, I'm gonna to have to increase my max stop loss to basically $200 because I my max stop is at 10% of my max position size, which is about $2,000. So starting after today, that's gonna be kind of the rule. Um, well, no new change, but that's just so you guys know. So if I'm trading with $3,000, then you know my max stop is at $300. Yeah, Corey, I feel like, man, whatever happened to those, huh? Definitely will, Shrikant. I definitely, definitely will. RETO, guys, popping higher here. I'd be really careful with this one. Um, it has very low volume. This is one of those classic picks that just kind of sell off the rest of the day. Don't really see a reason why I'd want to enter this one. It could have maybe a retest here at 1.4. I could definitely, definitely see that. But um, again, this one uh, is a bit of a danger zone. Or Parla, I would I would take maybe a step back and you know think about what your goals are, why you're trading certain things. Um, you know, you don't want to just run around trying to find the next hot stock if you're already down. B L I N U A V S. PSV. PSV having a nice breakout here. PSV, nice move here. Sweet breakout. Ten thirty, guys. It's officially ten thirty. Okay. 
PSV. Let's kind of check this one out a little bit. This looks like it could be one of the hotter ones. Um, did have this recent break here though, uh, and it's kind of struggling in this area, making me a little bit cautious for sure. Ooh, quick pullback it just had. Really, the only news on it is really the fact that it got the forbearance. And I'm not sure if that really, um, re you know, results in a 130% rally on the day. Might be a little bit high. Found some big support, though, at the 82. Honestly, PSV would have probably been the best ticker to trade today. Um, this was really the only one cracking up higher. It has some perfect, perfect breakout and pullbacks. Uh, look at this red to green move. Almost picture perfect. Pulls back 6% and then rips 16%. This area is a little bit tricky and sloppy, but once we break back above VWAP, we have a nice retest here. Break 17%, another retest. Oh yeah, PSV guys. This this one, I don't know what why I was not trading PSV. I think we're on the back side of this move though, so you want to be really careful. I could really see this ticker doing some sort of um, offering or something like that. Parla, I mean, I'd just be very careful. It's past 1030. This thing has had pretty weak former spikes, um, pro possible offering. I don't know. It, it could be a good, could be good setup, but I'd be a little weary of it myself. WIMI has really, really slowed down today. You know, I, you know, looking back at this one, I've seen this, this, general setup plays so many times and um, I could have definitely been green on WIMI today 100%. I mean, we knew we knew PSV was the, one of the lead gappers on the day. I just kind of discounted it because pre-market, it wasn't really doing anything. So I could have put an alert on if it broke VWAP. And once, once PSV broke VWAP right here, we would have gotten an alert. And then we had basically two minutes to get an entry on it. So like, I don't know. We, everything, everything was there today to, to make it a green day. I think that makes it a little bit annoying in a way we're not annoying but like ah oh, we're this close to having a probably a really big fat green day um i had been more conservative with my wimi entries and then honestly psv you know breaking back above vwap this one was a killer Let's go to Wafu, see what you're looking at. No problem, Kumar. Happy you like it. Wafu, this is actually a good sign. This is a bit of a bull flag right here. Um, this would be considered a, a breakout. Um, the problem is there's almost no volume here on the way to the upside. Um, and that alone would have made me not want to trade Wafu on this setup. PSV pulling back. A lot of weird tickers today. Wafu. 
look at look at the past spikes on wafu none of them have really held their highs too well except this big one it's really sold off quite a bit um, and then it just kind of held its highs here at four i don't really see this one unless it really starts picking up like corey said breaking above 7.5 or so um, that this would be really interesting again right now it's kind of a ripe candidate to keep pulling back Oh uh, yeah, OGN breaking higher. This looks okay. 15% so far. With the coronavirus news and the hamster test. This could be the move past 131. Boom, there we go, 132. One point five could be an interesting resistance zone on this one, just gonna kind of mark that. If OGEN holds this area, it probably would be an interesting trade. I'm taking a small trade on this one, small size, just as a little um, really good potential setup here. Looking for a continuation. Stop at 23, kind of keep it tight today. I know I said I shouldn't trade anymore today, but I hit technically I didn't go past ten percent of my max stop. Let's see if we can get a breakout here. So far pretty weak. Need to see a bit more volume coming in. Big seller still on this one. Looks like I'm about to get stopped out possibly. Small position size, really small position size making this trade fairly comfortable no matter what happens. Just wanna see if we can... Very slow breakout. Gonna give it a little bit longer here in this area.
I want to see some volume picking back up. We need to break the 28. Twenty eight possibly getting chipped away here. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. About to get stopped out. And stopped out. Took another twenty six dollar loss. Actually, I, I don't really feel that bad about this one. I thought the opportunity was really good. And I'll you know, I said I'm not gonna trade anymore, and I was right. I wasn't. Um but but I was looking at my rules and I was looking at them, I was like thinking, and then I was like, okay, 10% of my max position size, which today was $2,000, so that's a $200 loss. So technically, I could keep still trading without breaking any rules. I don't really feel bad about that. I know you guys are probably like, Alex, shame on you, but it was a good setup. I took small size, really small size, and it didn't work out. So yeah, that's why, that's why usually when you throw in the towel, you want to kind of probably stick to it. I think I think really today, um, I probably just woke up on the wrong side of the bed because looking back at WAFU, I'm just thinking, <sighs> I mean, not, I, I mean, looking back at WIMI, I'm just thinking like, I've seen this whole setup a thousand times and I traded it today, like, um, like an absolute, I don't know, like anxious teenager or something like that. Um, you know, buying the dip here when the market opened, that would have been perfect. Waiting, 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 waiting for reversal, buying the EMA breakout here, which I did. This was a perfect one. Buying the pullback here was actually not the worst idea, but I should have closed the position quicker. I held it a little bit too long. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. No no major regrets today besides the fact of not really listening to myself a little bit more and switching, right? Because we did everything so right pre-market. And then clearly we were on the backside of this move, pulling back about 30%. And I was still tripping over myself. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to close this chart so I don't see the, the, the charts anymore. So... Yeah, so um, Ian, um, good question. What about my rule on three trades? So, oh man, I actually broke one of my rules today. I didn't even realize it. So I have three rules on when I stop trading for the day. Rule number one, um, I'm down 10% of my max position size. So today my max position size was $2,100. I mean $2, we didn't reach that. And then when I was thinking about that, that's why I kind of did that last trade. So that's my first rule. Three red trades in a row. I'm not sure if I did three red trades in a row today, except till now. I just did three red trades in a row now, for sure. I just don't know about before that. And then my third rule, and this this sucks. Um, this is when I should have thrown in the towel today, when I give ha back half of my profits for the day. That's my third rule. So technically, when we went up from $80 and we went down to $50, or to zero, that was giving back half of my profits for the day. So I technically would have actually had to throw, throw in the towel on that trade alone. So I actually broke my rule on that third rule. I didn't even think about that one. Oh man, that's ridiculous. Don't forget to drop a like guys if you're enjoying the content and if you're learning something new here because I learn something new every day I trade with you guys. So yeah, I just lost another 26 bucks on that one. So we made RETO, we made $1.50 on this one. It was a partial position to fill. Um, and I just closed it because we didn't get a fill. What a rebel. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking here. So yeah, so when we were up 80 and we went into the negatives, actually, I should have stopped trading on that 
that move alone that's a tough rule to stick to when it's the market just opened because there's so much opportunity still to be had i'm not sure how much i like that rule today it would have saved me and i the reason i made the rule is because every time I gave him back half profits, I somehow end negative. So again, it actually happened today. So I should have stuck to that rule again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shrikant, you've been right all day. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. 142 down on the day is not that bad. That is something that we can get back easily on a green day. Um, yeah, that's that's not too shabby. Yeah, Corey, that's that's a really good kind of way to look at that rule. And I was thinking the same thing. So basically, if you give back half your profits, you're clearly, you're like below VWAP, right? And you're not, you're not trending in the right direction. Uh, so you're probably, something switches in your brain where you're like, I'm going to do a bit more revenge trading for now on. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm sticking to that rule. Dang it. I need to write it down. I'm going to write it down right now. I mean, it's totally in my head, but today I clearly forgot about it. Let's write it, let's write it down.
Nice, Ryan. At least someone, someone made some profits. Good stuff. And what was the last one? I wonder if there's a I wonder if there should be a caveat to the being down. Being down 10 to, I mean, giving back half your profits because there's definitely times where you, you know, you're up and then you're red and then you, you, and you can end the day green. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that rule should be a little bit flexible. I kind of feel the same way. It's like, it's not somehow perfect, uh, I feel like. I mean, obviously, like once, like let's say, you know, you made 50 bucks and then you give back 50 bucks, you know, that doesn't mean really you should stop trading. So maybe it's more like, like after 9.30 or something like that, or like 9.45 or 10 o'clock, like, or like once, once you have a little bit of cushion build, I don't know. I feel like there's a contingency to that rule. I'll have to think about it. I like the rule. I just feel like it needs a contingency. Wafu trying, let's check it out. Yeah, it definitely found some support here. Guys, just watch out, guys. The volume with, um, oh no, that's W-I-M-I. -I. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go to my cash account. This way I literally can't make any trades. There's no cash in this account. Yeah, it's, that's actually a really good idea. The problem is it's very subjective and you're clearly in a non-subjective state. Um, so you're going to always kind of talk your way around it. Uh, man, I don't know if I like it. How about next time it happens? We'll just put it up for a vote. And let's see what happens. But I think... I think that rule is not going to apply unless maybe I'm up 10% already of my max position size or something like that. So let's say I'm up $200, which is my max stop. And then I give back $100. Now I'm, now I'm at $100. I think, I think that might be how I play it. Although it's also not perfect because the last times that they all happened to me when I was up just a little bit of money. So I don't know if that makes sense either. Ah, it's a tricky, tricky situation we're in, guys. <laughs> Miz, now we're, now, now the good ideas are coming. Miz and Corey, you guys are on a roll.
uh, Steven, what happened, man? AIHS, it's actually surprisingly holding this area, but I haven't been a big fan of this stock really ever. Um, yeah, yesterday. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm not a, the biggest fan of it. Wafu keeps moving against you. Yeah, Wafu, man. Uh, just like yesterday. Man. Yesterday was so similar. Having a little bit of a rounded bottom here. I don't want to give you a false hope or anything like that. I would have a very tight stop as well. Um, also had a bit of a double top here, or a triple top, it wasn't able to get through, so that's a bit of a red flag. I would definitely not want to see it break 89. Oh my God, Ryan, oh, that story makes me nauseous inside, man. I'm, I'm so sorry that happened. Woo! Oh my God, why am I, guys? Why am I, why I am I is danger zone. I would be buying this 100% if I was not done with trading. I'd be buying this dip here at 19 and I'd be looking for a breakthrough VWAP. Let's see if I would be right. I'd still be holding, still be holding. I would still be holding, still, and I would have got chopped out, stopped out right there. It sucks. It would have been a losing trade for sure. Unless I got the dip right now because I missed the year. There's not a lot of sell volume here, which actually makes this still technically a good trade. Check out the sell volume. It's really, really low. Buying that dip off the nine minute would have been would have been the way to trade this one but if i bought the early dip here at 19 i would have got stopped out probably here for a two percent loss Here we go. Right now it would be FOMOing back into the trade. <laughs> wow. Good thing I stopped trading, guys. My trading today is so sloppy. Yeah, for sure. Unbiased trades. 10% is one of my rules. Wow. WIMI. Huge breakout here. Congrats to anyone that got it. 10% move. Corey's, Corey's long. That's what I like to hear. Holding its highs. Not a lot of selling volume.
I'm so jealous. I want to be trading so bad right now. Another breakout here at 78. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. This is so painful. Nice Corey, make your losses back. 31 to 65. That was a sweet trade. Basically bought the breakout and then you sold into that move. That was a good move, man. Sweet stuff. Calm down. Try um, using join the ask, join the bid. I like those. Honestly, this looks like a pretty good setup, I gotta say. Man, I wanna jump on this so bad. Here we go, this is it. Either a quick pullback or it's gonna shoot higher. This is this is not gonna hang around this area very long. Breaking seven, seven, 70. It's a choppy one. Exceeded the day trading buying power. Oh, that's never fun. What do I think about AMD? We could look at AMD in a little bit. Let's kind of watch WIMI right now. This is such a critical zone. What I don't like about WIMI right now is the fact that it had bigger sell volume here on this candle. That's typically a bearish sign. Uh, but I've been so wrong about how I traded WIMI in the evening, so I don't know if you should even listen to me right now. Always know why you're gonna trade. Always have a reason. Don't ever listen to anyone else. Here we go. Yeah, it's true, Corey, man. I've, I've been seeing the uh, the orders on the book, on the, the sellers, and they've just been so wicked. I could watch WIMI all day. <laughs> Ooh. 
it's got a lot of sell volume, not a lot of buy volume. Could could switch any moment though. Needs to break back above this old candle here at 761. Here we go, 64. This could be this could be the move. Boom! Buyers back in on this one. 6% move, really nice. We could make back our profits literally so quickly on a just a small candle like that. Here we go, 786. People might be nervous about the flushes it's been doing. Also check out the volume, it's been very light so far. Here we go, break of eight, nope. Oh my God. Nice, Jay. Sweet move. Volume is looking better than it was before. Yeah, Corey, I'm... <laughs> I'm totally with you on that. I'm just like, come on, prove me wrong. Boom, 808, here it goes. Can it keep running? All I know is buying the breakouts on WIMI today is just generally not the good idea. Although right here, the one time I wanted to do it and didn't do it, it actually broke out higher kicking myself so hard for that. Boom, there we go, sold off, had a bit of a flush. Yeah, Ian, 100%. There's definitely those days where if you just do the opposite of me, you'll be doing all right. Nice, Matt. That's that's a really sweet uh, sweet swing trade. Beautiful area to buy it. Yeah, good stop at seventy five. Unbiased trades. Yeah, check out the video description below, calm down. I got a link to my um, layout. Sarmillion, really cool. J-A-L-T. Yeah, A-L-T, a little double top here, but it looks like it's about to break through 24. Man, we were trading ALT back in the threes. Look at this thing. It's been just flying ever since then, huh? 800% up. Huge move. 
Wow, 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 wow. That's a beauty. Twenty five is the place to crack for this one. Looks like pre market it hit twenty four sixty five and then kind of sold off. So right now we're going to have that big double top. Wafu coming back. Good call, Corey. This one is kind of creeping up here, decently increasing volume. Big resistance here at like 727 roughly. Um, we had a bottom and one, two, three, four retests in this area. This is going to be the fifth retest. Usually you don't see a fifth retest without a crack. So I wouldn't be surprised if this one broke through. Let's see what happens. I'm still a little bit skeptical overall with Wafu though. Um, probably gonna be some big sellers here. This is a TD Ameritrade um, TOS platform, Thinkorswim. Boom, Wafu, there we go. There was the crack. There was the breakout. Really nice. This could be a good like afternoon trading day or late morning trading day. It looks like we have a few things kind of picking up again. Really, really nice. Look at that. Once it broke through the resistance, it was just a freaking go from there. I'm gonna put an alert here so we even break past VWAP. Yeah, good call, Corey, with Wafu for sure. That was a nice clean breakout from the 727 zone. It's not the biggest percentage mover, but still a really clean break. Should be a bit of a retest now. There's clearly big support here at 21. Quick pull back to 28. Let's see if it breaks out from here. This should be the second move. Bit more selling volume on this than I would have wanted. Let's see, here we go. This should be, shouldn't really hang around this area too long. Nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, look at that.
Wafu seeing a bit more resistance here. Here we go. Still decreasing volume, that is still a bear, bullish sign. Sell volume is decreasing. Let's see here. Nine minute coming in as big time support. Wow, huge breakout on WIMI. It looks like we're back on back on the the upside. I mean, back above VWAP, this is looking pretty healthy. Sweet move, man. I, I gotta say, it it is very tempting to want to trade again. So it's uh, it's it's almost ridiculous. Nice quick pull back there to the nine minute at seven ninety one roughly. Back above eight, maybe. Can we see it? There's a lot of selling going on here. Still pulling back. WIMI definitely has a mind of its own. Beautiful stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. I could just stare at the screen all day. I was stopped out today. I went past three red trades in a row. I went past giving back half of my profit. And I went past, no, that's not true. I didn't go past max down percent on the day. Um, so that was at least one good thing that happened today. Uh, so yeah, overall, bit of a red day for me, uh, which you know isn't the worst. We've avoided red days actually for quite some time now. So I'm, you know, it was overdue. Um, we did limit the downside by basically wrapping it up. Uh, who knows? Maybe I could have came back green though. And you know, there was definitely some good trading opportunities after we wrapped up trading. So it was, it's always tough to throw in the towel. Um, it it really really is. So the best thing you could do is really walk away. That would have actually saved me another twenty six bucks if I just walked away. Um, yeah, Corey, I think Wafu is getting ready for that second leg as well. All right, guys, I'm taking off. 
I'll see you guys in the recap video. Have a great weekend, everyone. Um, yeah, man, keep on trading. Stay safe. Make some awesome trades. Don't overtrade like me today. It was just ridiculous. Uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. Hopefully Monday will be a little bit better off. Don't forget to drop the like, guys. I appreciate all of them. Till next time. Ciao, ciao. some reason it has not stopped yet <laughs> well, I guess I'm just gonna sit here a little bit longer until YouTube ends the stream <laughs> <laughs>